Hello and a warm welcome back to Mr Midgley's YouTube channel. Uh, this is this afternoon's lesson. We're going to have a quick look at some electromagnetic effects. As we said last lesson, these two things go together beautifully, just like, I don't know, um, Shaolong Bao and Ginger. Mm. So, we're going to describe the pattern of magnetic field and how we're going to use that in solenoids, which are used for controlling switches. Um, we are going to have a look at how the magnetic field can be changed in a current carrying wire. And we're going to say a couple of uses that can be used for these beautiful electromagnets, which are used for recycling centres and in car recycling places. They used to be called scrapyards. I think they still are. Okay, so this diagram, this diagram comes up a lot. Why? Because the exam board like to ask you about this little diagram here. We see that we are using conventional current. You see conventional current coming around here. Don't forget the uh, large stick here on the battery is plus, and the electrons, which are negative, are going away from plus, which is just bonkers, but that's conventional current. Goes away from the plus, flows around the circuit, and then it goes through the wire, the electrons go through the wire, and as if by the power of Grayskull, are attracted to the negative terminal on the battery or the cell. How does that work? Well, it doesn't, it's complete nonsense, but it's conventional current, so that's what we learn. So, put your thumb up, right hand, not left hand, left hand will not work, right hand, put your thumb up. This thumb, the thumb pointing upwards, is the current, and my fingers going around the outside, around the outside, around the outside is the magnetic field lines. Okay, so we can do that. If the current was switched direction, tumsk, still use my right hand, not my left hand, my right hand, then the field lines now go around this way rather than this way. That way, for tums, for tums, for tums, or that way, for tums, for tums, for tums. Okay. So, magnetic field lines, they still point out of north and into south. Remember, it's conventional currents. If you're doing post-16 science, physics, you will learn it's um, <laughs> more embellished than anything. Um, the dots, now the students have problems with this diagram here at the bottom of the screen, the left-hand side. Why is it a problem? It's a thing you don't normally do. Um, you get a, a piece of uh, um, two-dimensional paper put it on the, the deck, on the table, and the dot represents the current flowing upwards, upwards, as shown in the diagram. So it's actually in your face, that current's going in your face, and and now they're going, look, point my thumbs point into my face, and my fingers are going round the outside in a anti-clockwise direction in this example. We can see the field lines using two methods. One is plotting compass, and the other is, Iron filings, you got it. Very good. So, on the features of the field, features of the field sounds like a uh, oil painting. Anyway, magnetic field lines are in circles. They are concentric circles. I'd like to see the word concentric, I don't know if I've made this slide, but they are. They are ever uh, getting larger as they go from the central wire. It's strongest, stronger, the closer to the wire you get, and weaker, the further away from the wire you get. And if I make the current stronger, I increase the strength of the field which is created by the travelling of any current in a wire. Okay. How do we know the direction? We know the direction. We use our right hand rule. The right hand is called the right hand grip rule. Do not confuse it by going onto Google and going, what's the right hand rule? And then you'll see this. We don't do this. <laughs> we don't do this until you've learned this. We're learning this, we'll do this next year. So, there's the currents, there's a hand holding the wire. It's a crazy thing to do, but that's what it's doing for the sake of your education. Holding the wire, the current's going from bottom to top, and you can see the current, the magnetic field, sorry, goes in the same direction as the fingers are pointing. Okay, and that's the same direction as the magnetic field lines. Cool. How is this useful? Well, it's useful, first of all, in something called a solenoid. And when we put a current through a wire, which is wrapped around a core, here's a solenoid, it's just a long coil of wire, a conducting wire, copper's great, it's kind of abundant, relatively cheap, and it's a great conductor. 
Um, silver might be a better conductor, but it costs an absolute fortune. Um, so the current produces a much stronger magnetic field if the wire it flows through is wound into a solenoid coil. So not just having a straight line going through a piece of paper, I'm going to wrap this thing around and around and around and maximize the surface area. Have a look at that diagram. That looks exactly the same, doesn't it, as a bar magnet. Why? Because it's the same physical phenomenon which we are looking at. Okay, it has a north pole and a south pole. Magnetic field lines come out of north and come into south. And then in the middle, they go around the outside, around the outside, and get further away. The bigger the distance between the field lines, the weaker the magnetic force. Okay, the strength is close, it's closer to it. And the number of turns will determine the strength. So the more turns there are, the bigger the magnetic field created by virtue of coiling the wire. So you can hear my daughter in the background. Uh, the right hand grip rule can also be used with this solenoid. And you put your hand there, there's north, north pointing to the uh, right hand side of the screen. And here are our field lines going round the outside, round the outside, round the outside. Make sure your thumb points to north. Jolly good, not that. What's use of this? What's, what's the point? Well, there's something called a relay switch, uh, which we'll come to shortly. The electromagnets, there is a very large electromagnet, which is gonna have the coils of wire and a soft iron core, turn on the current, creates a magnetic field, picks up all the ferromagnetic material, iron, cobalt, nickel, fenny, cot, remember that? Beautiful, because when the switch is open, there's no magnetic, no magnetic field created because a soft iron core, a soft iron core will only produce a temporary magnet, not a permanent magnet. Good point on your syllabus. Learn it, deal with it, move on with your lives. Soft iron core, turn on the switch, the current flows. Right hand rule. And we have a magnet. And we can pick things up using it and even better, we can drop them again at the other side, where we want them to be. So when a current flows through the coil, it produces a magnetic field. It's temporary and it is lost when the current is switched off. Two ways to increase the strength. We can increase the current flowing through the wire or the number of turns in the wire that we have around our soft iron core. Soft metal, such as iron, or mu metal. Mu metal, I've never seen that on a mark scheme. Stick with soft iron, you're okay. Other use is something called a relays device, which moves between a low current circuit and a high current circuit. So this is used for, for safety, okay. So a very big relay is used in cars. You've got a starter motor, needs a huge current. And it often asks you in the test to explain what happens when the switch is turned on in relation to this circuit or this arrangement? On the left hand side you have the low current circuits, the right hand side the high current circuit. So if you turn on the power what will happen is in the coil the electrons will flow in the wire around the soft iron core, will magnetize it. This will then be magnetized here. This will pull the armature down which will push that out and the switch contacts go together and the high current circuit will operate. Sometimes to give you as much as four marks for that. So the switch in the low current is closed, makes the electromagnetic electromagnets attract the armature. That pivots and closes the switch contacts and then the low current switch is opened and this stops pulling the armature and the high current circuit is broken again when you turn it off happy days. So electromagnets are used in circuit breakers for safety as well in the home. It does the same job as a fuse, but they trip on and trip off. They trip off when there's a surge in voltage. So say there's a problem at the power station or there's a problem with a transformer going to your block, then surging current, surging voltage and the uh, electromagnetic uh, trip switch will turn it off and save your house from uh, potential fire and damage associated with uh, the flames that would ensue. Okay, so a spring-loaded switch, it's a spring-loaded switch, it's gonna push back, it's held in the closed position by a soft iron bolt. The electromagnet, electromagnet is arranged so it can pull the bolt away from the switch. 
When the current increases beyond the set limit, then the electromagnetic electromagnet pulls bolt towards itself, releasing the push switch and breaking the circuit. Again, another three, maybe four mark question you could be asked in your IGCSE. It'd be very useful for you to be able to know the steps and just visualize what is going on there. Okay, I think that's enough for today's lesson. We'll leave it there. So uh, keep working, keep subscribing, keep liking. Have a great day. Thank you.